about if I want to go on holiday to um, Austria or say Australia because I want to go and visit some family, how do I get there? By train. in Parliament Square yet again. Today we're reporting from the Rebellion Extinction Rally. For days now, a week, they shut down Marble Arch, Oxford Circus, big trading areas, areas that contribute so much to Britain's GDP. But we're going to interview some of these people. I think they're upper middle class students and their parents and their grandparents. I think they're trust fund babes. They want to stop you and me travelling the world on planes. They want to cut our CO2 emissions. Anyway, come on in and let's go and have a chat with them and see what they've got to say for themselves. Do you think people should stop travelling for pleasure? Um, bikes are very good for exercise. No, but you say yeah, if you had a couple of, sort of working class families and mother and father work all the hours under the sun and they want to take a two week holiday somewhere, so they get on a cheap aeroplane, they go to a cheap um, destination. A lot of people here are saying today, you can only fly if it's an emergency. Do you agree with those sentiments? Um, I don't think that ordinary people should be flying at all. I think it should be purely for um, diplomatic and scientific purposes. Diplomatic, so. so but what sort of message are they? But it's only the right diplomatic people can travel. So if you're on the Brexit side and you're opposed to Brexit, you can't travel. But if you're part of the sort of CO2, anti CO2 climate change movement, you're okay to get on the plane and travel. I think you just moved the goalposts. We were talking about people going on holidays a moment ago. Well, you bring diplomats into it and then that involves politics, etc. But you don't think anybody should be allowed to fly apart from diplomats? Well, I don't know about allowed to fly. Um, I think it should be just made too expensive. So driving and going on an airline becomes the just just, just the, the playground of the elite and the rich. Not not a playground, um, but uh, if, if our cities were constructed in a way that meant you didn't have to travel very very far, then actually cycling and walking. Um, would be not only getting you to where you needed to be, but also what about if I want to go on holiday to um, Austria or say Australia because I want to go and visit some family? How do I get there? By train. Nobody could say to us, "You're not allowed to be here," because yeah. we'd taken the power, mm -hmm. we had taken the creative energy that we all know we have, and we so often leave within our hearts, almost like allowing it to fester. But now we're sharing it and we're coming out and we're agreeing that we're divine, sacred people. So, so how did you get here today? Uh, I went to see my son and help, help him uh, know that I, I love him because he's decorating my flat in Oxford and he's uh, so caring and because he's able to do this. But do you, how did you travel here? I, let me think. How did, I think I, I got public transport. I cycled. Yeah. Yeah. Well, from Islington, absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, so you're not quite sure how you got here? No, I'm not sure about anything. I'm not sure who I am. That's wonderful because here we're questioning. It's like a great quest of self-discovery. Uh, yeah, just sort of been observing it um, and just sort of thought we'd come and check it out, see what's happening. What do you think they hope to do? What, do you think they can change anything? Do you, do you think the government should be negotiating with them? I think it's we, not them. Are the government, Are the, government the, corporations, the corporations, the people, the people and, all of us and all of us going to cooperate on, going to cooperate on for a sustainable, for a sustainable future? future. We need solutions. We need solutions. It's like a chant. It's like listening to people that have been brainwashed, you know, cult followers. Um, it's like a horror movie. It's like something X-rated that's really creepy. And I can't tell you, I've got goosebumps standing here listening to them because they've all been brainwashed or had a chip inserted. It's cult-like. You listen. 
your critics in there and, and across some of the media will say, well, why are you here? Why are you not outside the Chinese embassy that emits 60% more combined uh, than, than the EU and the US combined? Why are you not targeting people like China? Or actually going to Tiananmen Square and then targeting well, protests there? All of these people can't afford a flight to go over there and if we all flew, that's more carbon emission. We're all from here. We try to think global and act local because where we are is where we can have an effect. And but so you could go up to the Chinese embassy? There wouldn't be as much attention or as much an effect from going up to the Chinese embassy. Like, If we went there, the chances of a change happening in China is very small. But a load of but, but they're the biggest polluters, so we're told. OK, but so we have to we have to at least try and show a way, like maybe they are the biggest polluters, but we can still do our bit. We can still try and do what we can do with the people around us. And if we didn't, then who else would? I saw that Jeremy Corbyn had met the Swedish teenager today. She called for a general strike. Do you back up that? <laughs> I don't support a general strike. But, there are, but the key... she has a lot of influence, apparently, as a foreign 16-year-old. Uh, she, well, she, she spoke with an eloquence on the radio today that I could never muster. So she She's got has... Asperger's an OCD and she's an elective mute at times. She's what, sorry? An elective mute. Uh, well, she was, muted. well, she was very impressive on the radio. And look, I don't support a general strike, but the way in which the campaigners have got this issue on the agenda, I think, is uh, I have to pay tribute to them. And we're all talking about it, which can only be a good thing. And you think they, uh, that the government should negotiate, but what are they negotiating with and who with, do you think? Oh, the government needs to pursue policies uh, to, put uh, to put climate change at the centre at the centre of all their policies, absolutely. The United Kingdom needs to do it. Justin Trudeau needs to do it in Canada. Well, I United think he's doing it. Uh, uh, what, Donald, what do you Trump, think? Donald Trump needs to do it as well, but he oh. doesn't seem to do it. Well, it looks like the Extinction Rebellion um, has extincted itself, really, um, from this great Easter weekend where everybody had a nice few days off, and they all came to London to disrupt our holiday and disrupt our businesses. It's rather a damp squib now. There's very, very few of them here. Yet it's taken 9,000 police to police this protest. We're not allowed in Parliament Square over there. You can hear it's for whom the bell tolls in the background. Um, there's just a few well-meaning, very middle-class people here. Not a black face in sight. Um, I think it, that just that sums it up, really, of where we are in politics in this country. They're too frightened to go to China um, because they can't get there by, by car or by boat or by train. Um, but we all know what happened if they turned up in Tiananmen Square. But this has taken 9,000 police, 9,000 police officers off our street. London is almost the knife crime capital of the world. Look, we've, got, we've had 9,000 police taken off our streets. They should be fighting knife crime. They shouldn't be listening to these lunatics out here. We should have the cells. We should have the police numbers. Theresa May cut the police cells. Theresa May cut the police. Sadiq Khan does not support these people. They should be out policing and not policing this rabble here. This is the state of our country. This is where we've got to. Once we Brexit, we can take back control. We can take back control of our police. And with that money that we are taking out of the EU, our, our 350 million pounds a week that we send to the EU, we can properly fund our police men and women. And I say amen to that, hallelujah, and wave my hands in the air as well. And do it little dogs for them too. This is Janice Atkinson reporting for Rebel Dark Media. So if you want the real truth about the climate change wheeze, I'll keep bringing you the updates and updates on Brexit as well. And for this reporting that you won't get from the mainstream media. So please like and subscribe and hit the bell symbol to never miss another Rebel video. Thank you.